Good evening, Dr. Gibbons. Dr. Watson. Did you keep the cane we spoke of last time? I was going to sell it tomorrow, would you believe, having not heard word. Do you have any formalin here? No, definitely not. They have it in university hospitals to conserve anatomical specimens in jars. But in a little clinic like mine, we don't keep anything but bad memories. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Dr. Watson. I must retrieve Sickert's cane at all costs. Yes, Doctor? Here are your harnesses, Doctor. They are top quality, I'd say. Definitely worth the prize of this walking stick. Here, it's yours. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Dr. Watson. I must go to Miss Bella's. Yes, Doctor? Could you tell me what type of pill this is? Yes, we have those here. It's not really a medication. We give them to patients with chronic respiratory conditions like tuberculosis. Did you have a patient by the name of Annie Chapman? The woman killed three days ago. Indeed. She came in the morning of her death. Poor woman. Did you give her these pills? Yes, now that I think of it. She actually came in twice. The first time I gave her an almost empty container without making her pay. She came back during the day and said she dropped the container and stepped on the pills. She wanted to know if I could give her more again without paying. I refused. After she left, a patient who was there told me that he lives at the same place and confided that she had been lying. He saw the pills fall in the tenement's communal kitchen, but the woman immediately wrapped them up in a piece of paper. Where did this paper come from? According to this man, she'd found it near the chimney in the kitchen. Anyone could have thrown that paper there. That envelope can't have anything to do with the murder. Pardon, Doctor? Uh, nothing. I was just talking to myself. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Dr. Watson. I must go to Miss Bella's. Good evening, ma'am. Um, your door was open. Isn't that a little dangerous? Hello, Doctor. Don't worry. If the looks of anyone who enters doesn't please me, me and my pistol know how to convince them to leave. Do you happen to know Annie Chapman, the poor woman who was killed three days ago? Dark Annie? Pfft. Like all the drifters in the area, I've seen her once or twice. With respect to the dead, Annie really was the bottom of the barrel. What do you mean? Well, in our profession, the pretty young ones go out when night has barely fallen and don't have a problem finding takers. But poor girls like Annie or Polly Nichols, who aren't as tender and are often sick, sometimes trudge around for a whole night in the cold and the rain before landing a client. And that doesn't help their appearances either. They don't have much choice about paying for a bed for a few hours, a glass of gin or a hot meal. How terribly sad. <sighs> That's the price of survival in Whitechapel, my angel. One of my girls knew Annie for some time. They bought some jewellery on the black market, I think. Jewellery? How could Annie Chapman have possibly afforded jewellery? <laughs> Luxuries for a woman are always relative to her condition, Doctor. As a matter of fact, it was real cheap junk. Annie got three assorted brass rings, I think. <laughs> it's been said I have a memory for jewellery. How is Lucy keeping? She's doing well, Doctor. But believe me, it won't last. Rare are the girls who can build a future in our profession. Very well. I shall let you get back to work, Ma. See you soon, my love. <laughs>
You're still there, Doctor. I found the cane that was stolen from your client. Here it is. Doctor, you are a real saint, I can see that. I'll finally be able to present my bill to this damned painter. If by chance you see him, tell him that a little surprise awaits him here. You told me you would give me some information on this Dr. Tumblety. Agreed. He's a Canadian or an American. He parades from time to time through the neighborhood in a 50 guinea suit and acts like a doctor. But for business, he isn't worth it. This damn Yankee hates women. The few times that he was approached by the girls, he spit on them, all the while hurling insults. It would seem that he was hunting for the bad boys. He's looking for trouble, that animal. Does he frequent any pub in particular? Aye, the Wasp's Nest on Burner Street, I think. A seedy spot, even by our standards. Very well, I shall let you get back to work, Ma. See you soon, my love. <laughs> The Wasp's Nest. This pub looks even more disreputable than the Golden Lion in Baker Street. Good evening, sir. It'll be the cool of my career, Governor said. Ha! <laughs> You'll make loads of dust of the paper, he said. You're a journalist? That's so. Tom Bulling at your service. <laughs> the Whitechapel ferret. The wizard with the scoop. You don't appear to be in a state to write anything, my friend. You're mistaken. Whiskey passes through the blood and turns into ink. Simple. <laughs> you see, mugs and inkwells are all the same. Don't you think you should settle your tab and go home? My red ink? Where's my red ink? I won't even pay half a halfpenny if they don't return my red ink. It's my blood you hear. Very well, I'll be on my way. <coughs> Greetings, my good man. Could I have a pint? Here, Gov. I've been told that Dr. Tumblety might be found around here. Is that so? I don't do a roll call of all the drunkards here. I've got my hands full just making sure I get their money. Don't people pay when they order? Nah, look at that little scribbler there. Completely dead drunk. Tonight's tally is about as long as his arm. If he skips out, I'll be in for a guinea almost. Goodbye, my friend. Oi, that's it.